Hello, my name is Robbie Fitzwater. I am the founder of Marketing Rhythm. We help e-commerce businesses with email and retention marketing. Um, and one of the questions we get asked all the time is, for an e-commerce business, what are the automations I should be running? Where should I start? I know I have so many ideas. Where do I even begin? How do I make sense of this? How do I think about this? So we kind of want to go back to first principles and kind of like think about what's going to make the biggest impact where we're going to have visibility and touch points across that customer journey. And we like to start out with six foundational automations. And at a high level, an automation is basically any email that basically does something based on somebody's behavior. So based on a trigger, I may add an item to my cart that may trigger an automation to send an abandoned cart sequence. I may sign up for an email newsletter that may trigger a, an automation that starts sending a welcome sequence. I may not purchase for like however long after um, I make my first purchase and that may trigger a win back to get me back in the door. So all of these automations are going to be based around the behaviors of your audience and what behaviors you ideally want them to take. So understanding what behaviors do you want your audience to take? How do you, again, align those behaviors and nudge along the way? And basically, how do we build a system that helps to create the customer behaviors we want to see in a really seamless, smooth way that really kind of gives us visibility and touch points, like I said, across that customer journey. So for us, we like to start off for our e-commerce clients with six foundational automations. So these are going to be the welcome sequence, the abandoned cart sequence, a post-purchase sequence, a win back sequence, a browse abandonment sequence, and then a thank you sequence. So all of these are going to give us, again, some different angles that we're going to approach our audience with and give us some different ways to communicate the different values we're going to be offering and we're going to walk through some ways to think about each of those and to think about how these are going to impact your business but for most e-commerce businesses looking at again growing these are six automations that are going to really fit really well into what they're already doing and ideally align with their customer journey so they can really have the most impact possible so where we'd like to think about this for marketing rhythm we like to look at this from the um, race framework using the reach activate, convert, engage stages of that customer journey. So that reach stage is that first touch point. They may be seeing an Instagram ad where they're like, oh my gosh, I need that. I don't know. I've never seen this before, but I suddenly need it. Or they may be realizing, hey, I have a problem. What do I need to do to actually start solving that problem? So that's when they're, again, maybe Googling and that's where your organic search comes in or that's where your paid ads come in. That's where, again, going to be your best friend. But once they actually go to your site, you're working to activate and engage them to keep them, again, researching on your site, understanding, hey, if they're problem aware, how do you get them to solution aware and then to product aware? And then gradually nurturing them along this journey to eventually where they can convert. So once they're at that convert stage, that's when they're ready to take an action. They know what product they want and need. And hopefully along the course of this journey, you've been a great guide to help them get the information they need. And then after that convert stage, this is where email really plays some of the biggest role possible in that customer journey is that engage stage where we want to take somebody from a first time customer to a repeat customer. And if they're lapsed, we want to bring them back in. Um, so ideally, we're going to, again, create that loyalty early on so we can create a great customer experience. But all of these automations are going to really fit nicely across these four stages and really give us a lot of visibility and connection along that customer journey, which gives us an advantage because we're not, again, beholden to ads to get them back into the store, and we're not beholden to a social platform to hopefully get them back through organic social. So this really gives us a nice way to start to deepen that relationship. And we're going to be doing different things with each one of those automations that really kind of ideally drives the behavior we want to see. But also there's a lot of unique ways that we can start to use some data and some insights we already have on them to really communicate in a way that's going to be unique and differentiated for them specifically. So in those automations, the first one everybody always thinks about is welcome sequence, especially if it's you're an e-commerce business and a growth stage. That's where the welcome sequence is really a valuable tool. Basically, that's what's going to be hopefully onboarding somebody to your brand. So basically, once they're on your site, how effective are you at like taking them from getting to your site to signing up for your email? And then how do you hold their hand and nurture them through to that first purchase? So again, if they do not purchase, most people aren't going to be ready to activate right then and there. If they're coming from Google Shopping, they may be product aware and looking for the best deal and they may convert earlier there. 
But if you're just introducing somebody to your brand, that welcome sequence plays a large role into introducing them to who you are, what you do, and, and what's important, and mainly how what you do is going to support them. And that's what kind of we work to take the angle of, hey, how can we not, like, again, we want to go rah-rah about our business, but how can we celebrate you and give you what you need based on the expertise and insights we have as a business? And that's where this, this really plays a large role in kind of creating a great customer and then giving them value in advance. So we'd like to start the welcome sequence with a few emails. This one we like to typically segment um, if we can, if we have any segmentation data, if we're collecting any extra data in our form collection. So like if we can understand the use case. So if we can understand like gift giver, parent or grandparent, like that's a really great way. Am I a heavy coffee drinker? Am I a lighter coffee drinker? Am I a decaf drinker? All of those things are going to give some insights into how I communicate so I can segment the communication with those with that audience distinctly for them, give them personalized recommendations, give them content that's going to be relevant to them. Like if I'm a grandparent, I'm not going to need as much content around like how to clean and care for children's clothing. But if I'm a parent, I may. So that's where you can really segment these and really change the way you're communicating based on the audience you're seeing. Um, we typically like to have five to 10 emails based on the segment we're sending to. And we like to sit, set this up over like maybe a seven or 10 day window. Think about your customer buying cycle. The larger the investment is, the longer that buying cycle is gonna be. So the longer they're gonna stay in that act stage where you need to be thinking about how to nurture them through a longer window. If it's over hundred dollars, they're gonna need a few sources of information to make that purchase. So understand what are they gonna need along that journey and give them what they need. So we like to offer a few different ranges based on what their needs are going to be. And we may introduce the business and how they, again, have some credibility based on what they do and how they do it. We may introduce some content in there where we can walk them through kind of like how they make a decision. And ideally, we're not too heavy handed with products and selling too early. Um, we want to warm them up, introduce our business, introduce why we're the experts in this, give them something of value, offer social proof to make them feel confident that we're, again, the right choice for a decision. And then we can get a little bit more. Here are some personalized recommendations for you based on X, Y, Z reason. That's one of the things that really starts to give us some really great communication that's going to be narrow and specific for them. And it, it makes them feel seen and heard, which is really powerful. And again, over that course of a seven to 10 day window, maybe, or even longer, um, depending on how much investment they're going to be making. So we are going to be sending a few consistent messages. We want to kind of show off a good number of things with this. Sometimes we may offer a discount that's again, capturing an email. That's going to be something that's also needed. Sometimes we also may escalate that discount if they haven't made a purchase after 10 days. So that's one way that we can kind of like give them some exclusivity, give them some content that's valuable, give them some urgency with a discount, and then also maybe offer something else to escalate that offer. If they haven't actually converted to that point, this should be one less thing holding them back. And basically, we want to be creating really unique engagement along that path. And the welcome sequence is really that onboarding to the brand, where we're really wanting to, again, hopefully help give them everything they need to make that first purchase. The next email sequence we we're going to be looking at is the abandoned cart. This is one thing that everybody thinks about. Everybody knows their abandoned cart. Like Shopify offers one of these natively as an integration, um, but we like to do a few more things. So you can send one email from Shopify, and that's great. We like to actually send a good number of emails in our abandoned cart. All right, we like to change our abandoned cart up enough where it's gonna be different. We like the segment based on somebody who's purchased zero times and versus somebody who's purchased multiple times um, or repeat customer. Because again, a repeat customer probably doesn't need an offer. Um, they may be a little bit easier to actually purchase because they've experienced your product, not just your marketing at that point. So when they've only experienced your marketing, they may need a little bit more incentive to actually convert. But once they've experienced your product, that's a little bit easier for them. And you don't necessarily need to sacrifice that margin if you don't have to. Um, so we like to segment based on repeat purchasers and new first time purchasers, also for purchasers in a certain category or over a certain revenue threshold. So those are going to be things that we're going to be segmenting out and changing the path that they're going to receive on based on what's in their cart, how long it's been, and basically asking if they have any questions first, have a nice first customer service touch point, then we may offer it like offer some type of discount after 24 or 48 hours. We like to have again up to like five to seven touch points along that abandoned cart journey. Um, not all of those are going to be really heavy handed selling, but 
if we're offering content that's going to be valuable, this is where we can kind of play the hits for content that's going to be interesting and engaging for that audience. And if we can, again, earn their trust and build credibility through content, that's a really great way to start to use that content as a Trojan horse to get them into the store, get them back in, make them feel confident and actually converting on that purchase. So we are going to be changing this this up really differently based on the audience we're sending to. We like to also vary these messages too based on like how they're going to receive them. We like to add some HTML emails in there where again, a little bit more heavily designed emails like an email you'd expect from a brand. We also like to add some plain text emails or some hybrid template emails or like we call them hybrid template. It's basically an HTML email that looks like a plain text email, has all the bells and whistles of an HTML email, but all the personal touch of a plain text email. And it kind of is a workhorse for us. But we want to vary that messaging a little bit to give some different angles we can take on that on this. And it basically gives us a chance to interrupt the pattern of just receiving brand email, brand email, brand email. They suddenly get an email from a person. It's a really just distinct experience. And that really works well to communicate that human touch. For most e-commerce businesses, we always joke like with our clients, like we're not here to outscale Amazon. We're here to outhuman them. And if we can do that, that's a differentiator for our business. And that really plays well for us in the long term. So this is typically going to be the second highest revenue generating email sequence or flow. And that's where we really want to start to use this as an automation to start to bring people back in the store. Um, later on, we'll introduce a cart recovery automation after this. We want to get typically our foundational automation set before we start to introduce more new sequences. But these foundational automations really do a great job of that. Um, and like I said, the cart recovery would be if somebody adds something to their cart, that's when we actually start receiving those. But because we have our browse abandoned and our abandoned cart or abandoned checkout, this is typically the first one we introduce. So again, typically about the second highest revenue generator, um, or if, if depending on the business, the post purchase sequence may be the second highest revenue generator. Typically the welcome sequence is going to be the highest revenue generator. Um, from there, we're going to be kind of using these in different ways. Um, from that point on, um, let's look at the post-purchase. The post-purchase is also going to be kind of in that same space where we took welcome sequence, we took somebody through here, and ideally in that convert stage, the abandoned cart, we brought somebody from here in the, again, engage stage to convert stage. And then the post-purchase, we're going to be bringing somebody from here where they're actually making that purchase into ideally that repeat purchase or onboarding them on the brand so they're going to find the most value out of the product and that's where the real magic happens is if they experience your product and and like it that's where we want to keep engaging keep that process going so that's a sequence of emails that's going to again follow up with them after they make a purchase and make sure they know how to use a the product they know what to expect they're going to get the most use out of the product and make sure that you give them every bit of information they may need to again have a great experience because afterwards they're going to have a better experience and be more likely to purchase your product again. So if I'm like a coffee brand, like, hey, how do I teach people how to grind their beans? How do I teach people how to like, store their coffee? How do I make sure that they know, hey, this coffee is only good for a certain range of time? Or how do I give them something they're going to be looking for at a given time of the year? Like, is this going to be, is it summer? Am I going to change this up and offer like a recipe for cold brew coffee? All of those things are things, something I want to be thinking about. So all of these are going to fit into a different area where this post-purchase is going to fit into that engage phase where we're going to be hopefully bringing them back in to create a repeat purchaser and ideally a um, loyal customer. And once they've received this, once they have made their purchase and start receiving this, they're also going to be receiving campaign emails too. Hopefully you're sending a cadence of solid campaign emails. Hopefully there's content baked into there too. So hopefully you can keep them engaged and keep them again, opening and adding that and finding value in the emails you're sending. The next one we like to go into um, is the browse abandon. This follows that same path where this is a little bit lower intent than the abandoned cart or abandoned checkout. They have not started a checkout process yet. They've viewed a product. So like the level of intent is a little bit higher here, but they're not still at that level, of that place where they're adding stuff to cart, going through the checkout process. But we wanna basically, again, if they're viewing products, we want to follow up with them and ask them if they have any questions based on if they've purchased from us before or not. We want to segment this based on who's received it, who hasn't. Um, or like if they purchased from us before, we may again treat them differently than if they haven't purchased from us before. Or based on like volume of purchases or category they're looking at, we may 
again, change that communication up a little bit too. If we offer a subscription product and they're viewing a subscription product, we may speak to the value of the subscription product. And if they've purchased our product before in the past and they're looking at a subscription now, we can be a little bit more heavy handed in the way that we're communicating that because, hey, maybe that's going to make their life easier. Maybe that's something that's going to be a natural fit for them. And also we can back that content up with social proof through reviews and, and testimonials that are work to kind of like build the credibility behind it. So like if they're looking at a subscription product the second time they're purchasing, they're likely going to be able to take action on that if they have all the social proof and feel confident that it's going to be a good fit for them. So that browse abandon is basically if I view a product, I'm going to receive an email afterwards. This may be variable depending on the business, like two to three emails for any given fork of that automation. And that's what's going to help this function differently. And then from there, we like to think about like win back. Um, the win back is going to be a sequence. It's going to be basically hopefully pulling people back into the store. Um, this is one where if somebody, again, is a lapsed purchaser, they have purchased and just haven't been back to the store. We haven't been able to get them back in. And that may be a good number of variables. This is where understanding your customer base and understanding the use cases behind your customers can be really important. So like we use the example of like parent grandparent or gift giver, like a parent's going to be purchasing children's clothing a lot more frequently to, than a grandparent or gift giver. So you may be a little bit more aggressive about communicating and following up with a parent because those that's going to be a larger audience that has to purchase more frequently. So that win back may be segmented differently based on use case, but also you're going to be hopefully communicating with them over time and hopefully finding ways to actually pull them back in. You may offer incentives. You don't want to offer too many incentives first, but like that win back is hopefully bringing people from lapsed back to repeat. And basically, if you're there, I can offer like a 10% off. I may be able to offer like 15% off and maybe even 20% off. But basically, I always think about this as like, hey, somebody's an astronaut holding onto our ship. They start floating away. I'm going to throw them a rope. That rope may be 10%. I'm, they keep floating away. They miss the rope. I'm going to throw them a bigger rope, a longer rope, that may, maybe 15%. And then I may have to throw them an even bigger rope, that maybe 20%. And hopefully, we're not sacrificing that margin too early. We're not ex exerting ourselves too early, but if that's not going to be what brings them in, they may not be ready to purchase again. So this is something where we don't want to let them get to that lap stage, but if they do, we want to hopefully bring them back in through different means. We can use content there too, but that's a, a smart, easy way that we can get them back into the store. And then the last one we'd like to talk about is a thank you. This one may seem more warm and fuzzy, but this one is actually a really strong performer for us. This fits along the lines with that, that post-purchase, but we like to change this thank you up based on the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth time purchasers, where we can change this up where, hey, the first time they purchase, they may get a, a thank you from a member of the team. And we like to make these, again, plain text emails and be really human and personal. If it's a larger business, like the fifth email they may receive from the CEO or the founder, where again, they have a pretty, a pretty recognizable name. And that's what really makes us powerful because they're not receiving those every time, but as they become a better and better customer, we're giving them different information. We're giving them a different experience and they're feeling more and more warm and fuzzy being like more ingrained with the brand. So that gives us a lot of different things to do at each one of those stages. And it gives us a way of making for, a, like I said, like a really holistic experience through that customer journey to hopefully make sure that they have everything they need. And when we can do that in an effective way, it gives us a lot more power as a business because, hey, this is going to be running for us in the background all the time. This is going to be our digital salesperson helping us out behind the scenes. And over time, this is where these get better and better because suddenly, if we know that we have a welcome sequence that's firing well, how do we test the different emails in here to make sure that these are going to be the best emails possible or the best emails for that audience? So we may be running a test at any given time. And when those tests are running, we may have like, again, two emails and then a fork. How do we, do we send a second email that are specifically tailored for those, again, use cases like parents, grandparents, or gift givers, and then combine those afterwards? Or do we, again, leave those forks going? Or do we give a different time horizon? We can do a lot of different things there where we can understand, hey, what data do we have? How can we leverage it? And how can we use that and to get on our toes as opposed to our heels, which is gonna give us a lot of power to make great decisions, but also optimize for our customer experience. So those six automations, again, like I said, play a large role in how we're engaging with our customers at each stage of that customer journey. 
like if we can get these six automations set, these will typically generate a strong amount of revenue quickly. This typically starts to generate like between 10 and 20% of their e-commerce revenue quickly because again, we're getting them closer and closer to the brand. We're bringing laps customers back in. We're engaging our first time purchasers and we're engaging our repeat purchasers. So those are really smart ways that we can get people back into the business. And we're going to touch that entire customer life cycle. And once we can start to optimize from there, we can really start to rock and roll depending on the business and the use cases behind it or like what the business does. That's where we start to get a little bit more nuanced in what automations we're going to add. And then typically with those, those automations we add after the foundational automations, we're scoring those like we talked about in our, in a previous blog post, we score those, we, we categorize those and then we improve on those. And then after the first year or so, or over time, we may be again, adding and adjusting these all, all the time. Like your website, this needs to be a living and breathing entity. This is not like set it and forget it completely. Again, it will run for you in the background, but update and change it. And that's where, again, this offers a lot of unique opportunities for businesses. And that's why we think this is really important. Um, we like to use Klaviyo for a lot of this for our e-commerce clients. Um, Klaviyo is kind of our go-to tool, um, but it's going to vary depending on what your business does or how you do it. But for any e-commerce business, like it makes it a lot easier. So you want to be focusing on your marketing as opposed to like focusing on the nuts and bolts of just making it work. So that's where we like to, again, get these up and running. And also when we have these five, this is also a really great way to engage your audience. These have a high open rate, high level of deliverability and a really great indicator to the, the Gmail, Yahoo and Outlook gods that you are a reputable sender and will hopefully help improve your sender reputation overall too. So lots of advantages to this. These are the six we recommend. If you can get these up and running, that's where you're off the races. It pays for itself and you'll have a lot more latitude to try more things. So you'll see a quick impact in revenue fast. And that's where we start to, again, take these and start to evolve. So like I mentioned, my name is Robbie Fitzwater. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I, like I said, we love talking shop on this. These are, again, a high level view of our, our foundational automations that we'd like to work on for clients. And once these are up and running, these are really some extremely great revenue drivers for a business. And um, yeah. We'll see you guys around. If you have any more questions, let us know. And um, I guess you could subscribe if you want to be part of the early audience.